I personally believe that our worst billionaire is Bill Gates. Um, I have many reasons for that, uh, not the least of which is the fact that the man is buying up hundreds of thousands, if not millions of acres of land. Why would he do road. that? And what would his motive be? Maybe he just wants to help us and he cares so much about enriching the land and the soil for us. Yeah, that's not why. No, I, I don't think so. Uh, but obviously, as we turn the page, uh, the Netherlands, while having massive farmer protests, is working with the WEF as part of the Food Action Alliance, among other endeavors to reshape the production and consumption of food. Now, of course, that ties in directly with why is Bill Gates, among other people, buying up so much land, not just here, but obviously in Africa and other parts of the world, uh, to basically control the food supply? Uh, the soil, yep. as we, as you know, you've done shows before regarding uh, the issues there and the health of the soil. Oh yeah, no, he wants to. Happen. Well, him and Monsanto are like arm in arm, want to basically control the world's food supply. That's what I think. Uh, can you talk about the World Economic Forum briefly and just how devastating that organization is and the fact that. They go to the, the corporate media go because of they're funded by them, obviously, but they go to such great lengths to kind of skirt the issue about whether or not what they're doing and the whole purpose of the WEF is to basically control the world. Um, that is the main purpose of it. Yeah. And we are. It's I mean, not you want to you want to get you want to talk, talk about being called a conspiracy nut. Even uttering words like this is considered complete blasphemy. But I think the cat's out of the bag at this point. I think is most that people. A, wait, wait. You're saying that it, the idea that the World Economic Forum is trying to control the world is a conspiracy theory? Yes. <laughs> I just thought said. that was just an understanding. No, it's definitely an understanding now where they can't hide it anymore. Are, I always thought that. What was ever the point of it, if not that? Oh, so, you're not. Some, yeah. Okay, so, so, first of all, the title of the book actually comes from the World Economic Forum. So, You Will Own Nothing comes from their eight predictions for 2030, which came from input from the Global Future Councils. And the number one prediction was you'll own nothing and you'll be happy, which as somebody <laughs> who's, you know, studies wealth creation, I can tell you that wealth comes from owning things and particularly assets that hold their value or can appreciate in value. So you have this organization which is littered with the elite of the elite, the political elite, the business lead, anybody else who's influential is part of this non-governmental organization that's run by a guy who literally looks like he was cast as a Bond villain. Like you couldn't even make this up as you try, Klaus Schwab. And mm -hmm. he has been trying since 1971 to get this idea of stakeholder capitalism and stakeholders um, kind of put out into the world. And he has, I mean, I give the guy credit for persistence. You know, he's been repackaging it and redoing it over and over again. Now, I think that what happened with the WEF, because I'm going to just say I was a WEF useful idiot for a hot minute as well is that they get all of these people and they invite them to fancy events. I was invited when I first started on the internet doing some like Twitter, you know, blogging influencer stuff to come see an event in New York. And it was pretty normal. And there were, you know, people who had best-selling books talking about concepts. And you're like, oh, okay, you know, that sounds great. But at its core, the, if you hear the word reshaping, transforming, reimagining, like anything that's working just fine that they're trying to somehow completely change, it's got this group in the middle. And when you talk about it not being a conspiracy theory, Peter, it's not. I mean, the video that I talked about is not only out there in the open but there are multiple videos that have the same kinds of things and articles that you can kind of trace the same ideas, just repackaged. Um, and, you know, you've got all of these really big people who are there. And I don't think they're all there for nefarious reasons. I really think that a lot of them just see it as opportunities to connect with other high level people and to be seen as important and to be seen as thought leaders. And then they become the useful idiots, the one who are going to, to serve man, right? And they take these ideas back into the corporate yeah. world and into the governments. 
There is a very famous video with the WEF um, that with Klaus Schwab, he was at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government talking about how he penetrates the cabinets and about all the people that he knows that have been associated with the World Economic Forum and shaped as part of their Young Global Leaders program that are in these places. And so they're doing everything they can to take these ideas, which are in many cases nuttier than a jar of peanut butter, and frankly, in many cases, nefarious and, and destructive, and find these people to carry them back, often not realizing what they're doing. And again, when you say conspiracy, like if their name just popped up a couple times, you would be like, eh. but when I was doing my research, like anything that we're talking about here like the same names just popped up yep. over and over again. And it's the WEF and it's the United Nations and it's BlackRock, the largest asset manager in the world. Like at some point, it's no longer a coincidence. Like I believe in coincidences. <laughs> I'll give you like a little bit of generosity. But like when it happens over and over again, that's not a coincidence and it's not a conspiracy either. And so that's why this yeah. is so dangerous because these are the people, and this is really the thesis of the book, that in some ways they're kind of moving us towards a new world order, but at a minimum, they just see that it's happening naturally. Like we can't, this is a historical style. They're, they're like Peter, they study history, they know it's happening. So they're like, okay, well, we could just like hope this works out for us, or we could like try to control this and make sure that us and our buddies come up on top and that we own everything and screw everybody else. They'll just own nothing. Or maybe we'll get them to buy into it. You know, that Peter keeps quoting the, the you, will, you will be happy part of this. They need you to believe that you're going to be happy owning nothing. And throughout history, anybody who's owned nothing has been unfree and very, very miserable if they happen to live. So this is one of the big reasons why. Technology is our greatest asset and it's our greatest detriment at the same time because people have become cognitively dependent on their technology. Oh, people are so stupid now. Which, and by the way, they don't own and is rented to them or licensed to them as a subscription or a service, training exactly. them for non ownership and letting the big companies collect rents in the process. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.